Like father, like son, and that's not always a good thing, especially if dad is a gang member with a long record of violent crime. Chris Blatchford has the story of one family that got the message a little too late. Chris. Children of veteran gang members often learn to survive the hard way on their own and shaped by a generation or two of negative influence. In this Fox Undercover report, we see it can be a legacy of gangs, prison, or death. There is a clinking sound as he walks, a reminder that chains shackle his legs and harness his arms. Already a convicted killer and only 17 years old. The judge takes the bench, and Edward Dumbrique swallows hard, waiting to hear if he will spend the rest of his life behind bars. Prosecutor Valerie Rose Cole recommends an adult sentence. Mr. Dumbrique committed an adult crime. He horribly killed the man. Here in Hawthorne, Dumbrique shot and killed an unarmed rival gang member. A dozen shell casings littered the pavement. The drive-by victim hit multiple times, at least once in the back. A jury found that Dumbrique, only 15 at the time, was the trigger man. Guilty as charged. His mother, who has served a few prison terms of her own, still has trouble believing it. Yeah, that was like the worst day of my life, the day of the, day of the verdict. Mary Murillo says her son is really a good kid with a high-level IQ. But detectives say Edwards started getting arrested at age 12. That a Lawndale 13 gang tattoo was marked across his stomach. His nickname, Chucky, illustrative of his behavior as a hardcore gangbanger. Chucky recalls one gang detective seemed like a kid destined to end up where he is. Meet his father. I love my son. If I had to die today so he can live, I mean, without a question. I, it wouldn't, I wouldn't even have to think about it. And it's sad, but it is true. It is my fault that he's in there right now. 36-year-old Jesse Dumbrique has Southlos tattooed on his neck, the name of his gang. This whole wall represents my neighborhood, Southlos gang. Jesse Dumbrique was in elementary school when he started hanging out here with the South Los gang near 106th and Vermont. It's all about the South Los. He was known here as Chino. At the Russian bank. On these streets, he learned to rob and steal and use heroin. He spent more than half his life behind bars. You know, I wouldn't have uh, wished this kind of life on anybody. I grew up in it. I was raised in it. I understand it. For my sons, no. Jesse Dumbrique now lives here in Florence, Colorado, surrounded by the Rocky Mountains and piles of razor wire. It is the maximum security federal prison. Dumbrique has a history of escape and was transferred here after a serious assault on another inmate. It's not much of a life at all. He is restrained in full shackles and escorted by three officers wherever he goes. Open. 23 hours a day, he is locked down alone in a small cell behind double doors. One solid metal, the other prison bars. There are no contact visits here. We have to interview him through a glass partition. He's honest about his life of crime. Thinking I was enjoying it at a younger age, out there in the streets, but no. Because now it's all paying, now it's all catching up to me. It's all catching up to me. Now I've lost it all. You know, I've lost all my adult life. In 1992, he and an accomplice robbed a bank in Torrance, and later another takeover style here in Newport Beach. <laughs> the stolen money was equipped with an electronic tracking device, $1,800. chased by police cars and a helicopter. <laughs> Dumbrique dumped his getaway car outside Newport Beach Country Club left his gun and small bills behind. Yeah, they grabbed me and moved me over. And hijacked the golf pro and his electric cart. And they said drive. The pro jumped free and left Dumbrique behind the wheel. Cops gave chase and confiscated golf carts of their own. It was all over quickly. Jesse and his partner in cuffs. Jesse Dumbrique was convicted and sentenced to 37 years in prison. It was here in Arizona a decade ago that he last saw his two sons. He was on the run at the time, an escapee from the L.A. County Jail. He was not here in court last month, 
when his son Edward was sentenced to prison for murder. He is sentenced to uh, state prison for the term of 25 years to life. 25 years to life in prison. His father calls it a waste. And it's not his fault. Because we allowed him to learn, meaning me and my wife, allowed him to learn what he has learned. The parents have to um, be the examples. You know, they have to um, do things that you, normal people do in society. Mary reflects that out of the 16 South Los gang members in her wedding pictures, some are dead. All have been in and out of prison. Some are there for life. Still, she says she never thought it would happen to her own son. It's not a happy ending. Edward has to serve 25 years before he is eligible for parole. All right, Chris. Officials say right. the earliest release date for his father is in the year 2025. Let all kids know that it's not worth it. It's not worth it that all you're doing is following a pattern that has been set up for you. It's time to break that. He says it doesn't have to be like father, like son and that parents need to wake up. After it happens, and then that's when you realize what you could have done. It's all my son, my love. I tell him I miss him a lot. Mary Murillo now works as a counselor to teenage gang members. Jesse Dumbrique is hopeful that successful appeals will get him and his son out of prison sooner and that they will both get a second chance. Tomorrow, the story of a man who won't get that second chance because his big gang member's son was shot and killed. Thanks, Chris. Thousands of angry farmers take to the streets a demonstration.